Hi, this is Veronica Henry. This demo on Boot Managers is from my CompTIA Linux Plus course. In our lesson on the boot process, we learned that the bootloader, which sits in the master boot record, or MBR, allows the BIOS to load the operating system, i.e. the Linux kernel, into memory. And there are two most commonly used bootloaders that you need to be familiar with, and they are Lilo and Grub. I warned you about Linux's colorful terminology, didn't I? Lilo stands for Linux Loader, while Grub stands for the Grand Unified Bootloader. At boot up, the bootloader will present a menu where you select the operating system that you want to load. The image on your screen is an example of a Grub boot menu. And as you can see, we have several Ubuntu Linux kernel options. Next, we'll take a more detailed look at these bootloaders, starting off with Lilo. Lilo used to be the default bootloader for many Linux distributions, but recently it's been replaced by Grub. Bootloaders are installed during the installation process, though previously in some distributions you could select which bootloader to load, but now Grub is installed by default and that's probably the way you want to leave it. The image on the screen represents a sample Lilo screen. Now Lilo can also be installed on an existing system by typing in the words Lilo, lowercase, from a command prompt, but you first need to set up its configuration file. So let's talk a little bit about that. In case you happen to run across Lilo on an older system, you should still understand how to use and configure it. Its configuration file is loaded in Etsy forward slash Lilo.conf, and it has two sections, a global section and a per image option section. The syntax for each statement in this file is option equal value. The options are boot, which specifies the devices that contain the boot sector. Default sets the default kernel or operating system that you want to boot if the user doesn't make a selection. Prompt issues a boot prompt intended for user input. Timeout sets the time in one tenth seconds that Lila waits before booting the default kernel. LBA32, or Large Disk Support, enables Lilo to boot with disks where the partition is larger than 1,024 cylinders. VGA sets the VGA text mode to use while booting. Root sets the root partition. And Read Only sets to mount the file system in Read Only mode. Now you'll find that the Lilo configuration file actually looks a lot like Grubs, and we'll take a look at an example in a moment. But for now, just bear with me. The next section, the per image section, is for Linux kernels or other operating systems. The section also has a set of options that are set in what's called stanzas. The image option designates which Linux kernel file to use. Other indicates the partition will have its own bootloader. Label provides a name. And initrd points to an initial RAM disk. Append passes other options, like memory settings, to Lilo. But what if we wanted to add a new kernel to our system? First, you'll need to obtain root access, and then open up the configuration file, etsy, lilo.conf, in your favorite text editor. You can then copy and paste an existing stanza and modify the appropriate information. You'll probably want to change the label line, and this must contain letters, numbers, or both, but no spaces. Then change the image line to point to your new kernel. And once you've made all the changes you want, save the file and exit the editor. Now while still logged in as root, you have to type in Lilo in lowercase letters. This will reinstall Lilo in the master boot record, and you'll see your stanza names echoed on the screen. Now I learned the hard way not to remove an image until you're sure the new one works. That way if you have problems, you can still log in using the older kernel image and troubleshoot. The Lilo command itself also has a few options. The first, capital C, space, C-O-N-F, dash file, tells Linux to use a configuration file other than Lilo.conf. Dash lowercase t tests the configuration, not writing anything to the master boot record just yet. You often couple this one with dash v, to see more information about the changes that would be applied without actually applying them. And finally, dash boot space boot dev specifies an alternate boot device. 
Again, Lilo isn't a bootloader you're likely to run into, but those pursuing certification should be familiar with its operations. Let's move on to Grub. If you recall from the last slide, when you modify the Lilo configuration file, you have to type the Lilo command to reinstall it into the master boot record. But with Grub, this isn't necessary, and that is just one of the reasons why Grub is now Linux's default bootloader. You may have also heard the term Grub Legacy. This refers to the older version and the one you'll need to focus on for the certification exam. There is a newer version of Grub, but we won't cover it in this material. Grub's configuration file is forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash menu.lst, and that is a lowercase l, not a number one. But some distributions may use a different file for instance, grub.conf. The big difference between grub and lilo is that you don't have to reinstall it after you make changes to the config file. When you reboot, the changes are automatically applied. Now, as I mentioned before, the config file looks much the same as lilo's. Here's an example on the screen. But let's take a live look at that. Let's switch over to our Linux terminal. From Applications, let's click on System Tools and Terminal. Now for this command, we'll have to obtain root privileges. So let's type in su and the root password. Now from here, we're going to use the cat command again to display file contents. So let's type in cat space port slash boot port slash grub forward slash m menu m e n u dot l s t and hit enter and you can see the contents of the file now here's something that threw me when first trying to configure my own file take a look at the line that reads root h d zero comma zero right here this line demonstrates a bit of an odd difference between the way grub refers to disk drives. The Linux OS would refer to the same drive as HDA. So accordingly, Linux drive HDB would be a grub drive HD1. This is an important distinction and one I'd really like to emphasize. Another point is that the drive is followed by a comma and a second zero. This represents the partition number and the numbering starts with 0 instead of the 1 that Linux uses. So again, Linux's HD1 is Grub's HD0, 0. And that's not all. Grub creates its own root called the Grub root. And this isn't necessarily Linux's root file system. Just remember that if you didn't create a separate partition for boot when you partitioned your hard disk, Grub's root will be used and includes the full path to refer to the root, usually forward slash boot grub. But if you did create a separate partition, grub's root partition will be the same as Linux's boot partition. Like Lilo, grub has per image options. They are title, which again specifies the label, root specifies the root partition, Again, this is the forward slash boot partition if you separated it. Otherwise, it's the Linux root represented by the forward slash. The kernel option describes the locations of the kernel and any kernel options you want to pass it, like for instance RO for read only. init rd again specifies an initial RAM disk. root no verify specifies a boot partition for operating systems like Windows which Grub can't load directly. Chain loader says to give control to another bootloader. If you figured out that in order to add a kernel to Grub, you need to edit the menu.lst file, you're right. You need to obtain root or admin privileges, open the file in your favorite text editor, and essentially perform the same steps we did for Lilo. You copy the stanzas, make any changes, and save. The only difference again is that you'll need to reboot to have the changes take effect. You won't have to reinstall. Now Grub again will probably be installed by default, but to install it manually, you use the command grub-install space device. 
So for instance, grub dash install space forward slash dev forward slash HDA will install grub into the master boot record of your first hard drive. You can make grub edits in the configuration file or on the fly. When you boot up and the grub menu appears on your screen, you can use your arrow keys to move up and down the kernel listings and pressing E will allow you to edit that kernel option. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.